You may have seen some high-end boxes that have these beautifully soft interiors and wondered how have they done this? What sort of magic is this? Something like this example here, it's got this soft coat on one side, but you can see it's just regular pine plywood underneath it. One option of course would be to stick material down like this craft felt, but often these will be curved surfaces or multiple surfaces inside a box, not just the base of it. And that would obviously be very hard to get it lining up with no seams and all that sort of thing. Rather than craft felt, those boxes are often flocked. That is, they have something called flocking that is applied to it. That flocking is glued down with specific adhesives. But first, what is flocking? Flocking is typically made of a synthetic dyed fibre such as nylon or rayon. Rayon is made from cellulose, so it's sort of like wood on wood, but there's a whole chemical process to it. Don't really need to worry about that. Most commercial flocking that you can get these days is either going to be rayon or nylon. They will depend a little bit on your application, but it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, the one I've got in my hand, I have no idea what it is because it matters that little. Uh, it is a very fine powder, which is really hard to grab actually. Very fine powder, which uh, goes onto the adhesive, it dries, and then you've got that beautiful soft surface. Because of the way that it's applied, it allows you to do curved surfaces, whereas fabric would be much harder to get that nice and stuck down to a curved surface. Also, because it is a powder, it allows for a much thinner coat while still being nice and fluffy. You don't have to worry about uh, the strength of the material because it is glued down to a wooden substrate. With a brief explanation out of the way, we can look at actually applying flocking to some samples so that we can better understand how to apply it to boxes and other uh, woodworking projects ourselves. I've got four sample boards here. Two of them have been sealed with water-based polyurethane. Two are just raw. The water-based polyurethane isn't required. You can use any sort of sealer. Shellac would be a fantastic option here. Uh, basically, you just want to seal the wood off, otherwise you might find that the adhesive absorbs too much into the wood and you don't get as even coverage as you might. Otherwise, by having some unsealed samples, you can see what that difference will be like. I've also got a water-based flocking adhesive. Honestly, this smells just like acrylic paint, so that might be all it is, but it's the matching colour for the flocking. Really, you just match whatever adhesive to whatever flocking you get stick with the same brand and you'll generally get the best result if you use that throughout. I also have a flocking applicator and we need to fill this up first before we get our hands dirty with the adhesive. So let's take a closer look at this. So this is a flocking applicator gun. It may look like it's just a cardboard tube with some holes in the top and if that's what you think, you are almost correct. There's two cardboard tubes. The idea is you load the flocking into one half and through a piston motion it'll shoot out the top. These work incredibly effective. You can get into the corners of boxes really well, but they are kind of expensive. And ideally you want to have one of these per color of flocking that you use, just because you don't want any contaminants in it. So that let's say you're using a gray and the next time you use a red, you don't really want gray to be in your red. Flocking is something that comes in a wide range of colors. So if you have to spend an extra $20 per applicator per color, it gets a little bit expensive and you may tend to stick to one color whereas if it was cheaper you might use lots of different colors for different applications for different projects where it makes sense. So one alternative I've seen or I've read about is Pringles. We've got the proper Pringles brand and then the supermarket brand Pringles is a slightly larger tin and it fits over. Not quite as good a fit, there's a bit of wobbling around but it still pumps air out the top. I've drilled the same pattern of five holes with a three millimeter bit. So we'll also test how that works. Whatever applicator you use, load some flocking into the non-perforated section. Also do this on some paper towel because the flocking will go everywhere. You can't have too much flocking. You can always reuse what's not actually glued down. So it's always best to be very generous with how much you put into each applicator. You can then slowly and gently put the perforated section of top. We don't want the flocking to shoot out at the moment. And they can be put to one side. So the adhesive itself is like any paint. You want to make sure it's properly mixed, but unlike paint, when you're actually applying it, 
you want a very, very generous coat, you essentially would apply twice as much as you would if you're actually painting. A thick coat actually does work better here. That's why I've got two sets of samples on. One of them I'll do a thin coat, like you're applying a uh, finish, and the other one I'll apply properly. Again, to show what the difference is like. Ones will represent not enough of a coat, or what you'd apply as a normal coat of finish, and the twos will be normal coat of flocking adhesive. Hopefully you can see how much thicker this coat is, and that's about what I'd apply properly if I don't thin it too much for a proper flocking application. We really want the fibres to stick to it and they will make it nice and smooth. So to actually apply the flocking is a gentle twist and push motion. The air forces the flocking out the holes and onto your workpiece. Like so. You want a nice thick coating of flocking uh, anything that doesn't actually adhere will fall off and can be reused on a future project. Those boards are inside now. It takes about 24 hours for the glue to fully cure. There's a fair bit of excess on top of it and that can just be left there until it's ready to knock it all off uh, after the glue has fully cured. Either way, I'm going to leave it the full day because there's no point really rushing it. Next thing to address is the two flocking applicators. Obviously the proper one worked just fine. How about the chip based one? Unfortunately this didn't work too well uh, until, and this was after the samples were done, I added a small gasket out of some stick on felt. This isn't the greatest fit, it's a little bit too tight. But this gasket stops all the air from rushing backwards because when I was doing the pumping action all the flocking was being blown towards my face. So it wasn't a great uh, flocking applicator. With that gasket, it's working a lot better. I've also drilled four extra holes closer to the perimeter. And I think with the larger diameter, that's what it needs rather than the exact uh, hole pattern. But this now works quite well. And I, yeah, I can't really argue against the price of this. A couple of packages of chips versus $20 for a larger applicator. I think you'd want to find a better uh, gasket solution. This works, but it's just not ideal. And this is why we do the flocking on a piece of paper or better yet in a plastic tub. I've done this on paper, so it's easier for you to view. But now we can make a funnel out of the paper and put it back in the jar. Because this flocking is still all good, uh, except for the random piece of paper. So I can just put this back in the jar as is. Put our four samples, we have the two that had the sort of half coat of finish, half coat of adhesive on it, less than the recommended amount, and the recommended amount, or at least closer to. I believe these two are the ones that didn't have the sealer coat at all, and I haven't tried to remove any of the excess flocking yet. Before I do, it might, might be a bit hard to pick up on camera, but on this sample here, there's definitely thinner parts of the uh, flocking where it just hasn't stuck because there was less coverage of the adhesive. It's not so bad on either of these two, possibly because they were a thicker coat, but we'll see when we get the excess off. Before we go on, you can see these big streaks on this side. Less so on this one, but they, it is still present where perhaps the wood was more absorbent and absorbed some of the adhesive early, and it's Definitely coming off a lot easier than perhaps it should. And on this one, when we use the correct amount of adhesive, none of that's coming off on my hand. That's feeling nice and soft to the touch. This is feeling pretty good, but unfortunately I am seeing some issues here. So perhaps I didn't apply enough adhesive. Perhaps the seal coat blocked it a little bit, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a little bit splotchy in terms of visuals, but it does feel nice. Whereas this is inconsistent with the feel and you can see quite a lot of extra flocking is coming off. So let's say you did get a result like these samples that didn't have enough adhesive and you're not happy with it, you wanna get a nice coat on it. How do you repair that? 
In the case of this one, I can actually just rub off the flocking that's left behind. Well, that didn't adhere properly. And I've got an almost completely stripped board. This one, it's not quite as bad, but it's still very patchy. So how do we repair this? I've heard of a couple of different methods. So let's go through them. First is obviously to just scrape it all off if you can, and then reapply the flocking from scratch. Just do a nice thick coat of the flocking adhesive. That will work in some situations, but in others, like inside of a box, that might be a little bit too tricky to actually scrape off enough of it. So let's go for the repair option. Two options we've got is applying more flocking adhesive over top of it, or PVA, and this is just white glue rather than yellow glue. You don't want to use yellow glue because it's going to dry yellow. Nearly all white PVAs are going to dry clear, so the IE will still be the correct colour. <laughs> you don't want to use Type 1 3 and find all your grey flockings turned brown. I'm only going to apply it onto half of it so that we can see the difference. One of the issues with applying flocking glue over top of the flocking is you can often get a hard line. I'm expecting uh, there will be a noticeable line. You can't really do a patch repair, you need to do the whole thing. So we'll see how that goes. PVA fix, I'm just going to pour some out into this little container. You can water this down if you find it is not uh, flowing smoothly, though this is a fairly liquidy PVA. You don't need quite as thick a coat as you do with the flocking adhesive. It certainly goes further. So what you may be able to do is apply the paint underneath rather than flocking adhesive and PVA over the top. I guess that's another thing that we can try. The PVA repaired sample is only going to take half an hour to about two hours to dry completely. It's a fairly warm day here today uh, and it doesn't take anywhere near as long as the flocking adhesive to dry. However, there's no harm in leaving it longer so I'll leave both of these samples overnight and we'll come back tomorrow to see how they've turned out. For various life reasons it's been about two months not uh, overnight that these have been drying but we can see the repair jobs. And remember I didn't apply this to the whole thing so that's why this one looks a little bit crappy. This was with the flocking paint back over it and it's done a pretty good job. I can feel definitely a bit of a seam there, but it is a soft edge. Uh, and feel-wise, compared to the done properly coat, it's about the same. So the repair of a small area, pretty easy. What's particularly interesting though is the PVA sample. Now, this is under a video light, so you can see the discoloration, though in real life it's particularly looking straight down rather than on an angle. Uh, it is actually reasonably uniform. There's definitely a raised section here. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what went on here, but it is otherwise pretty good. And it, it's stuck on there. That's not coming off there. So PVA is perfectly adequate as a adhesive for the flocking. However, you will still need to match the color because if you don't have that color underneath, anything that pokes through doesn't have 100% coverage will show up as a different color. Perhaps that's what's going on here. Maybe the coating wasn't enough and you're seeing more of the PVA whiteness. I'm not really sure. Either way, as a repair job, particularly if it was in a small application, uh, pretty great. Now I must admit that my previous attempts of flocking boxes haven't always gone all that well. They've gone okay but not great because I just haven't spent the time to learn the particular techniques of just slapping enough glue down and it'll work just fine. Uh, so I will most likely do more flocked uh, objects in the future because I love the tactility of the flocking. Yes, it looks interesting, but it also really makes you want to touch the project. And I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about power carved furniture is that it really makes you want to reach out and touch the project. And that's something that not a lot of furniture will do. Often we build very square boxy stuff and it's more utilitarian than it is necessarily something so tactile. So this is really exciting for me because it's something I really enjoy about woodworking, something that you can't always get off the shelf. So if you didn't know of flocking, hopefully this has demystified some of it and makes it seem a lot less intimidating to get a good finish. And the big box bonanza will continue. Next up is rebated boxes reinforced with dowels.